Hi, and welcome back. In this lecture, I'd like to go through the uh, basic pieces of software that uh, we'll be using throughout this course. I'm not going to be going into details uh, and showing you how to install or operate these bits of software, but I just want at this point to present them to you so that you know what's coming up ahead. Almost all of them are free software and open source, except of a couple of uh, pieces of software that uh, I'm using just as paid versions just for the convenience of them, but they do have free alternatives. So that's nothing to be worried about if you're worried about budget. So let's begin with the operating system. So for this course, uh, I've selected to use the full version of the Raspbian operating system, which at this time is Jesse. And uh, this version has been released in May of 2016. This was released uh, alongside the Raspberry Pi 3. And the nice thing about Jesse is that it comes with support for the uh, integrated Wi-Fi module on the Raspberry Pi 3. Therefore, if you are using a Raspberry Pi 3 and you plan to use the integrated Wi-Fi, I strongly recommend that you use Raspbian Jesse. This is what I'll be using in this course. If you're using a different version of the Raspberry Pi, like a Raspberry Pi 2, perhaps, or even 1, uh, everything that I show in this course is compatible with those Raspberry Pis, then you can go for an older version of the Raspbian. Major component or piece of software that we'll be using is Python, so the application uh, that implements the bench computer uh, is based on Python 3. You could write the same exact application on Python 2, but I've done my tests on both Pythons, and because I didn't find any issues at all with Python 3, I decided to just go with the latest and greatest version. Python 3 comes uh, as uh, comes by default with Raspbian Jesse. Actually, Raspbian Jesse comes with both versions of Python, both 2 and 3. So there's no problem at all. We're going to go with Python 3. The second major component on which the bench application is built is TKinter. So TKinter is a GUI package, allows Python programmers to create Python uh, graphical user interface applications. And again, it comes integrated, comes prepackaged with Raspbian Jesse. So no problems at all. Again here, everything that you need come with the operating system. Speaking of Python 3 and TKinter, the two main uh, hardware components uh, for the bench computer are the PyFace Relay Plus hat and the camera module. And they both have their own Python libraries that make it very easy to use each and all of their capabilities. So we'll be downloading and installing the PyFace Relay Plus library from GitHub. And also there is the, the PyCamera equivalent interface library. All of those, of course, are free. Moving on. Um, of course, the bench computer will have its own screen and will be able to attach a USB or Bluetooth keyboard. But I find that it's much easier for me to do application development, software application development on my main development computer. So for that reason, I find it very beneficial from a workflow point of view to use Microsoft's remote desktop application, which allows me, there you go, allows me to remotely connect graphically to my Raspberry Pi. So using Microsoft Remote Desktop, which is just a, uh, an implementation of the RDP protocol as a client from Microsoft, you are able to remotely view uh, the Raspberry Pi graphical user interface, and you can execute and interact with the application just as if it was running, running in front of you physically. So this is what a version of the application will look like, and I'm able to do a lot of my development work just sitting comfortably in front of my uh, development computer instead of uh, on my bench, just uh, using the little touch screen on the Raspberry Pi.
This application is free for Windows and for Mac computers. So this is a place to get it for a Windows machine and this is a place to get it for your Macintosh. Uh, although I've tested other RDP clients as well. RDP is the st a standard stands for Remote Desktop Protocol. Uh, there's other implementations out there as well, but I just find that the Microsoft implementation is very solid and very uh, usable. So I recommend that that's the one that you use as well. Of course, we'll be doing a lot of uh, software development and tweaking and debugging. So you'll need a nice text editor for this purpose. So the one that I use is Sublime Text. Although this is the one that I personally prefer, uh, you could use any other text editor that you're used to. We're not going to be doing much more than just a uh, one or two uh, file uh, editing at a time with a bit of um, search and replacement at most. It would be nice if whichever text editor you use has got uh, basic software development text editing features, especially color coding, uh, that will be very useful. Next up, we are going to be using the command line. So I'll be using the command line, in my, in my case, the, uh, the Macintosh uh, item to command line application. And I'll be using that to remotely connect to my Raspberry Pi via SSH and interacting with my Raspberry Pi remotely this way. Uh, I'm also going to be using predominantly the command line using item to transfer files back and forth from the Raspberry Pi to my developing computer. But if you're not too comfortable doing this on the command line, you can consider a graphical user interface type of application. Like in my case, I use CyberDAC for this purpose. And I'm able to, again, remotely connect to my Raspberry Pi, browse its file system and uh, copy and drag and drop files into and out of my uh, CyberDuck application in order to transfer files. The CyberDuck application is not free, but I think the, the cost is uh, well worth the convenience that you get from it. And that's about it as far as software is concerned. In this lecture, we covered the most important pieces of software that you need throughout this course. Uh, all of them essentially free, except for a couple of pieces, as I mentioned, that you can also find free alternatives for. Let's move on to the next section now, where we'll start with, the, with actually setting up our bench computer. Uh, kicking off the process with uh, setting up the operating system on an SD card. Mm -hmm.